although it was my goal to reach the bottom and search for anything that might either confirm our suspicions or refute them as an overactive imagination. I found myself willing to examine my surroundings for fear of what the oppressive dark had been hiding down here to finally be illuminated by a single weak headlamp. I opened my eyes. There was nothing there. There was no little body, no pile of corpses, no blood, no bones, and no gore. Well, that's it then, I thought. I'll just climb back up and we can go home. But was it not our intention to come down here anyway? Wasn't it the plan to find a chute to continue our exploration into the deepest part of this mine? It was not until finding the necklace that this mine seemed to change. It was as if the necklace had awakened the mind, or more accurately, awakened the darkness. All around me, the darkness seemed to be sentient. Fingers of the black void reaching in from the edges of my headlamp beam. They were closing in, and it was getting darker. My headlamp battery was running out. I turned back to the chute to yell for Jim to slide my backpack down to me. It had extra batteries and my handheld flashlight in it. I peered into the chute and yelled, but there was no reply. I waited to see if I could catch a glimpse of a tiny pinpoint of light to indicate that Jim was looking down at me, but there was nothing, just pure blackness. I called out again and again, still no response. At some point, I felt as though I was not calling Jim anymore, but rather asking the dark, more like pleading with it, begging even. Just when I thought the blood in my body would surely begin to dry up, I heard something coming down the chute toward me. The sound of nylon rubbing against the smooth wood increased in pitch as it gained speed through the long tunnel before flying into my open arms. I quickly opened the backpack to find that it only contained a Polaroid camera and some extra climbing clips along with a few other things. This was not my pack. This was Jim's pack. Mine had extra batteries and Jim's had the rope which was being used as my safety line ba Suddenly, I heard another sliding noise. The rope then began gathering at my feet. That was it. There was no way back up the chute now. It was far too narrow and far too steep for me to climb. It was going to be very difficult, even with a rope, but now using the chute was impossible. I yelled again for Jim. I even screamed. But again, there was no response. What was happening, I thought. Had Jim planned this all along? Had he planned on getting me somewhere that I couldn't escape from and leave me down here to die? All that bullshit about that necklace, I ate it up and then was all too willing to allow myself to go first. What was his motivation? Why would he, why would he do this to me? If I ever make it out of this place, I'm going to fucking strangle him. Yeah, I'll strangle him and toss him down this damn chute. See how he likes it, the fucking asshole. No, stop, I said to myself. I had lost myself in that moment. For that very moment, I had forgotten who Jim even was, other than a target of my anger. And anger being a byproduct of an immense fear that I would find creeping into me in all directions. Something must have happened to Jim. Never in a million years would he purposely do something like this to me. Or would he? I thought.